Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly hanged it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the profit, not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. Thank you. Also developing right now at noon, the search for a gunman is on after a young mother is killed and a child injured in a shooting. It happened at an apartment complex in Miami-Dade's Naranja neighborhood. Local 10 News reporter Joseph Ojo is live at the scene with the latest on this investigation. Joseph. Well, Janice, we are learning that that 24-year-old woman was a TSA officer. She was killed right here behind me, gunned down. Her three-year-old was also injured, but that three-year-old said to be in stable condition. From this orange evidence marker to the stair stained with dry blood, signs of the deadly shooting Monday. Sky 10 over the scene, showing the body of 24-year-old Lashante Jones laying for hours at the foot of a staircase. We're trying to figure out what was the motive here. We're trying to figure out what caused this type of, of, of senseless violence. Jones was gunned down around 3.30 Monday afternoon at this apartment complex off of US 1 and Southwest 258th Street. Police say a dark gray four-door Nissan drove up and someone inside opened fire. Jones was shot and killed pronounced dead on the scene, and sources tell Local 10 her three-year-old child was grazed by a bullet. The child taken to Nicholas Children's Hospital, where she is now recovering. <laughs> Loved ones gathering at the scene overcome with emotion. Our cameras capturing this distraught woman escorted by police into their mobile command center. It was heartbreaking to be able to stand with the father and just listen to the pain he was going through. And us as a community, we need to come together. A spokesperson for TSA released a statement on Jones. Yesterday, we tragically lost one of our TSA officers who was killed as she returned home from the airport late in the afternoon. I am shocked and deeply saddened at the senseless act of violence that took a young, vibrant officer away from her family and away from us way too soon. Words just cannot properly convey the immense loss all of us are feeling at this moment. Give us any type of description, doesn't matter how small it may be. Investigators can use every piece of information in order to hopefully come to a closure. So no description on the shooter, but police described the vehicle that the shooter was in as a dark gray four-door Nissan. If you have any information, you could receive a $5,000 reward if you come forward with any uh, tip or information. That number, Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers number, 305-471-TIPS. We're live in Southwest Miami-Dade. I'm Joseph Ojo, Local 10 News. Joseph, thank you. Right That's now, just a heartbroken a family remembering a young mother gunned down in front of her own daughter. And tonight, we're getting our first look at her suspected killer as he remains on the run. Local 10's Christian De La Rosa is live in Southwest Miami-Dade. Christian. We've talked about how this was a hardworking mother, a TSA officer at MIA, and you tonight, you said it, a surveillance picture of the shooter. Keep in mind this tragedy coming, taking place just day before the Sunday holiday. She was still in her work uniform. They took her from me. A grieving mother days before Mother's Day. Lashante Jones was 24 years old. She had just got home from work when she was gunned down right next to her three-year-old daughter. I haven't even told her her mom is, is gone. Like, how can you explain that to a three-year-old child? I'd never be able to kiss my baby. I'd never be able to hear my baby laugh, play with her nieces and nephews. That's taken, it's gone. Jones was murdered Monday around three in the afternoon outside her home at the Coral Bay Cove Apartments on Southwest 258th Street and South Dixie Highway. Detectives releasing this surveillance picture of the killer pointing his weapon at his victim. Her little girl luckily only grazed by a bullet. But how can you do a three-year-old child like that? He needs to turn himself in or somebody need to say something. Somebody need to talk. My daughter didn't trouble nobody. 
Any little bit of information can help detectives make an arrest in this case and get this family some justice. If you think you can help, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. And we're live in Southwest Miami Day tonight. I'm Christian DeLaRosa. And tonight with startling new details in the murder of a TSA agent. I'm Juwan Strader. And I'm Jackie Nespra. Police say a woman paid a hitman in PPP loan money, and that's just one of the outrageous allegations. NBC6 reporter Ryan Nelson is in Northwest Miami-Dade with the details tonight. The warrants revealed a tangled web of allegations, including murder for hire, fraud, and witness tampering. Police say 33-year-old Jasmine Martinez masterminded the murder-for-hire plot bankrolled by PPP loans that left 24-year-old Lashante Jones dead in May. Jones, a TSA officer, was gunned down at this Naranja apartment complex in front of her daughter. Investigators say it all started in November 2018 when Martinez was arrested for allegedly beating up Jones. Just over a year later, the warrants say Jones was robbed at gunpoint in the courthouse parking lot by two men, including Martinez's ex-boyfriend, Kelly Nelson, after testifying against Martinez. About a year later, the warrant says Nelson called Martinez from jail. The warrant quoting Martinez in that conversation as saying that she is ready to go kill this hoe while referring to Jones and quote, Jones has to die. The warrant also accuses Martinez of harassing Jones and offering her money not to testify against Nelson, who has children with Martinez. But the warrant says Jones still made her deposition in April, testifying not only against Nelson, but to the alleged witness tampering by Martinez. In late April, police say Martinez's new boyfriend, 35-year-old Ramil Robinson, finalized a murder-for-hire deal from jail with alleged shooter 29-year-old Javon Carter. Robinson's accused of negotiating a price for the hit over the phone while speaking in code. The warrant says, quote, Robinson asks if he can get the number 10 jersey. Carter responds that it is usually 20 to 25. Days later, Jones is shot and killed. According to the warrant, cell records reveal Carter and Martinez in the area of the killing at the exact same time. Detectives also say they found video on Carter's phone of him counting cash hours after the murder, saying it was just another day at the office. Attorneys representing Martinez and Robinson say Martinez has denied any involvement since she spoke to investigators this past summer and say Robinson had nothing to do with it. Ryan Nelson, NBC6 News. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Florida with it. Dade County. Y'all meet us in there, my yo, yo. This shit about to be wow. Now, today we are going to be covering a young lady by the name of Jasmine. Martinez, but it's impossible to tell the story of Jasmine Martinez without mentioning Javon Carter, Ramil Robinson, and Kelly Nelson. Now, this story is just wow, and it has layers on top of layers, and it's going to go back all the way to 2018. Now, just to kind of set the stages, everything involving this murder is going to be surrounded by a fight from the murder victim, Lashante Jones, R.P. to her, and Mrs. Martinez back in 2018. Now, this is, this is definitely going to be a story to show you how going tit for tat can get you in the end on top of that certain shit you got to let go because here it is 2022 and she's facing conspiracy to commit murder i'm almost sure in 2022 and not to mention she also got her new boyfriend arrested and her ex-boyfriend arrested now if that's not the kicker throwing a little ppp loan action and this shit is a whole movie. So like I mentioned earlier, this all surrounds a fight that happened between Lashante Jones and Jasmine Martinez back in 2018. 
Now, Jasmine Martinez would end up being charged for battery, but that was the start of the conflict. I don't think that particular incident was the cause of the murder, but it just springboarded from there because Jones would show up to testify against Martinez in February of 2020. Now, after the scheduled court hearing for that case, and this was at the Richard E. Grissom Justice Building in Miami. Now, Jones reported that she was held at gunpoint and robbed in a parking lot by two men. Now, one of those two men was Jasmine Martinez's baby daddy slash current boyfriend. After reporting that robbery, Kelly Nelson was charged and Lashante Jones would agree to testify against him, according to investigators. In a sense, her agreeing to testify pretty much sealed her fate because the plan to have her murdered would come in motion on February 11th, 2021, when Martinez would call Nelson over the phone and said that she was ready to go kill this hoe and that Jones had to die. The very next day on February 12th, Robinson, who was Martinez's new boyfriend, records show that he called Martinez and he said that he felt bad for Nelson for him being in jail for some shit that he didn't do. It would be less than an hour from that phone call with Martinez where Robinson will call the alleged hitman Carter and tell him that Martinez was going to come see him for a life or death situation. Now, later that day, investigators say that Carter text Martinez and that's where the introduction of the two was made. So fast forward on March 25th, 2021, Jones would report that she was harassed and she was offered money not to testify against Nelson and another gentleman by the name of Keanu Queen, who was not charged in her murder, but is charged in a robbery that led to her murder. She would also receive a message on social media asking her to call her attorney and to say that Nelson did not have a gun and that Jasmine Martinez wanted Nelson home. That way he can help with the kids. Now, on April 9th, 2021, not only would Lashante Jones come forward with her deposition against Nelson and Queen, she would also testify about alleged witness tampering at the hands of Jasmine Martinez. Now, don't forget we're in Florida. So the very next day on April 20th, somehow from his jail cell, Nelson would go on to get a $15,000 federal PPP loan. Now, about a week after getting the loan, Robinson allegedly would call Carter back to negotiate the price for the hit and while speaking in code, it said that Robinson asked if he can get the number 10 jersey, where Carter would go on to respond that, nah, it's usually 20 to 25. Never mind the fact that they couldn't agree on a price. A warrant would show evidence of Jasmine Martinez withdrawing $10,000 in cash. And on April 30th and May 1st, police say that cell phone records show Carter and Lashante Jones's apartment complex allegedly surveying her. Then you will have the fatal day of May 3rd, where Lashante Jones was shot and killed in front of her daughter. Her daughter would also be injured in the shooting when she was grazed by a bullet. An anonymous caller would go on to identify Carter as the person who shot Lashante Jones. Investigators will also find cell phone data placing Carter in her apartment complex at the same time of the shooting. Not only that, they also found a video on his phone from the day of the shooting after he was arrested, showing him counting a large sum of cash saying it was just another day at the office. So this shit is just totally wild and wicked. Now with the evidence, that they have against them and how this case is lined up with the paper trail of going back and forth to court. I don't care what lawyer they got. I'm going to suggest taking a plea deal if you get offered one. And my question to y'all is how long before you not let this shit go? This is definitely going to be one of those instances of when keeping it real goes wrong. 
where Jasmine Martinez gave a few of them guys the GPS directions to crash. And just think about it. Jasmine Martinez won the fight in 2018. I can't even imagine how bitter or what the fuck would have went on if she would have lost. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We gonna be back with some more Real Trill Spill shit. Make sure y'all hit the bell right under this video so y'all know when this Real Trill Spill shit is dropping. And y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what gangsters we missed, who we need to cover. And y'all already know what it is with me. It's your boy Papa Lot. Mob, 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 ties.